Luke chapter number 17. Begin reading verse 22. The Bible says, And he said unto his disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they say uh, to you, and they shall say to you, See here, or see there, and go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under, under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And that day he which uh, shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for a wonderful Sunday school hour. Lord, thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. And thank you for much assurance. Lord, a little assurance suffices. Much assurance overwhelms. And Father, we bless your holy name. Now, Father, we thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good time of fellowship with thy people. And Lord, thank you for the, uh, the reading of the word of God. Now, Father, we need you. So we ask that you put a hedge about this place. Lord, we pray that the wicked one would not be allowed to disrupt the service or divide hearts or divide attention away from what thus saith the Lord. I plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over this place. I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. And I pray that you'd enlighten our minds to truth. And God, I pray for the saints of God. You'd encourage them and edify them. No telling, Lord, uh, what they have faced this week. But you know they're down sitting, they're uprising, the hairs on their head. You know all about them. You know where they've been, you know where they are, you know where they're headed. And so, Father, I pray you would increase their faith. I pray you would bless them. You would help them, encourage them. But, God, we pray you'd revive us, Lord, ever drawn closer to God. And then, God, I'm interested in those that may be in our midst today who are unsaved. They've never been born again. Some may be church members. Lord, some may be good moral people. Some people may have good intentions to get saved. Some may be sitting here and not interested in a thing that's going on. But God, I pray that you'd show up in such a way that rests their attention. God, help them to see where they are and help them to see where they're headed. And God, I pray they'd give their heart and life to Jesus Christ. Now God, use this unworthy vessel. Help me this morning. And God, will thank you for what you do. For it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do ask these things. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention here as Jesus is instructing his disciples. First of all, he forewarns them. We find in verse number 22, he said, And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall see it not. And they shall say to you, See here or see there, and go not after them, nor follow them. And the Lord Jesus is instructing them. He's helping them to understand that he's about ready to go to Calvary, Brother Bob. 
and his disciples who have spent every day with him for the last three, three and a half years uh, are going to desire him, desire time with him. Uh, they're not going to be able to find him, Brother Brian, because uh, he's going to go to Calvary, then he's going to go to the grave. Uh, of course, we know the end of the story. We know he got up from the grave, uh, but uh, he said there's going to be some say, see here, see there, not to follow after them. Uh, and can I say, uh, during those days, uh, the chief priests also sent out a decree to find his disciples uh, and to destroy them as well. Uh, now, how do we apply that today? Uh, can I say, uh, we're on the brink of his second coming. I believe that. Uh, now, can I help you with something? Before he literally comes back to this earth, uh, he's going to take his church out of here seven years prior to that. Uh, I believe we're living in the last moments uh, of the last days. Uh, uh, friend, uh, everything is uh, lining up, all this happening in Afghanistan, all that's happening in our government. Uh, uh, friend, you can see the handwriting on the wall. Uh, if you personally can't see the handwriting on the wall, uh, you're in trouble. Uh, uh, you ought to get in the altar and ask God to open your heart and your mind to the things of what's going on. Uh, uh, but can I say this today? Uh, uh, there are many today offering false hope. Uh, there are many today preaching a false gospel. Uh, there are many today perverting money. Uh, 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 false Bibles and promoting false Bibles. Uh, the Lord is saying not to follow after that crowd. Uh, you better follow after him. Uh, we see he forewarns his disciples. Uh, and then he foretells of his second coming. And I won't read it, but verses 24 through 30, he mentions as the days of Noah, as the days of Lot. He's talking about his literal second coming, uh, where Zechariah tells us uh, in chapter 14, he's going to land on the Mount of Olives. Uh, he's going to split that mountain in two. Uh, Revelation 19 tells us uh, uh, he's coming back uh, in the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God, uh, and out of his mouth going to go a sharp two-edged sword. Uh, you see, uh, all nations are going to turn against Israel. I said all nations uh, including the United States uh, and many have already turned their hearts against Israel uh, and there's going to be a great battle in the valley of Megiddo uh, where all nations come on Israel uh, and it looks like Israel's going to be wiped out for the last time uh, and about the time it looks like there is no hope. Uh, he's coming. Uh, he's going to defend Israel. Israel's still God's chosen people uh, and hey uh, if you're saved uh, if you're washed in the blood, uh, you're coming back with him on a white horse uh, and we'll witness what he does uh, when he destroys uh, mankind for fighting against Israel. Uh, they said the blood will flow to the bit of the horse's mouth. Uh, hey, he forewarns that he's coming. Uh, and he said in the days of his coming, it's going to be like Lot and Noah's days. Mm -mm. Friend, Sodom and Gomorrah is going on on Main Street, USA. Mm. Uh, in Noah's days, the imagination of everyone was evil continually. The Bible says God, it even repented God that he made man. I wonder what he thinks of when he looks at man today. He not only forewarns his disciples or foretells of his second coming, he also deals with forgetfulness. Look at verse 32. He said, Remember... Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. You remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? Lot had so ruined his testimony that even his family wouldn't listen to him. And the Lord sent angels to pull Lot, his wife, and his two daughters that had not known a man, pull them physically out of the city. I wonder what it'd take for God to get some of you and some of us off of some of the things we're involved in. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything extra. Uh, I won't elaborate, but you already know. As soon as I said that, it struck a chord in your heart. Mm. Uh, you know the story. As God begins to rain fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot turned, Lot's wife turned back, and she became a pillar of salt. See, she loved her sin more than she loved the thought of being saved from her sin. And that's why we can't have revival today. Too many of God's people love their sin more than they love the thought of the power of the Holy Ghost moving in our midst. 
I wonder if God revealed behind us on a screen how much you prayed this week. I wonder if you'd be ashamed. I wonder if God revealed how much you read your Bible this week if you'd be ashamed. I wonder if God revealed how much you actually did for God this week if you'd be ashamed. Let me answer that. We all would be. You're welcome. Didn't help you with anything. But I find the days of Noah and the days of Lot were similar in that mankind had some of the same attributes. Notice that they were active. Look with me in verse 27. said they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they builded, they planted. Can I say? They were very active. It amazes me how busy people are. Now, I remember, I know I'm old, but I remember a time that if you didn't buy gasoline by Saturday by 4 o'clock, you didn't get it till Monday morning. I remember when they rode the sidewalks up at night. I remember uh, there wasn't a whole lot of carousing around because there wasn't a whole lot of places to go carouse. Mm hmm. Now we live in a society that never sleeps. 24 hours a day, something's going on. I remember when the TV went off at 1 in the morning. You only had four channels anyway. But that was it. They'd play uh, the Star Spangled Banner and Old Glory waving. That was it. It was gone. You had to wait till the morning news. Now you got 7,000 channels being pumped into your house. Watch it. Isn't it amazing at 3 in the morning there's nothing on? You got 7,000 channels. Infomercial, 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 infomercial. Huh? But there's something going on all the time. Hmm? Hmm? I would not advise walking around Walmart at 3 in the morning. But we're so active. Everybody's busy. Nobody has enough time. We don't have time to sleep. We don't have time to have family meals anymore. Don't have time to have family altars anymore. Don't have time to talk about the Lord. Don't even have time to come to church anymore. We're so busy. And isn't it amazing, I'm going to meddle right here, isn't it amazing every time the school does something, they do it on Wednesday night? I remember a time when they didn't do anything on Wednesday night because everybody knew that's church night. Maybe if Christians quit showing up to the school stuff, showed up to the church house, they'd quit doing it on Wednesday night again. You're welcome. didn't cost you anything. Hmm? See, we don't have Christians that make a stand anymore. We have Christians that conform to the world. Whatever the world says goes. Well, follow the science, preacher. I'll just follow the Bible. The Bible will never lie to you. But Dr. Fauci has. I had to throw that in. They were active. Can I say this? They were accumulating. Look what it says again in verse 28. It says that they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. They just kept getting and getting and getting. And that's our society. They even have bumper stickers. He that has the most toys wins. Everybody's all the time buying, selling, getting, 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 never have enough. Used to, you're just thankful to have something on your, on your table every night. You'd thank the Lord for it, and he'd provide for it. A lot of times you'd grow it, you'd can it, and make sure you had it for the winter times. Now we got uh, 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 not only uh, cupboards, now we got pantries. Uh, 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 now we got more than one refrigerator. We got a freezer, it all filled, and we don't take time to thank God for any of it. Mm. Used to, family was blessed to have a vehicle. Now if you like to foster household, there's 15 of them sitting out there in the driveway, and you make the whole neighborhood mad because there's no place to park because you're taking it up. Are you listening? Uh, we got vehicles, uh, we got uh, 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 clothes, uh, we got houses, we got lands we got everything but a touch of God on our lives mm -mm. we're accumulating they were active they were accumulating but notice also they were apostate 
Look at verse 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Apostate means to abandon the faith. In the days of Noah and the days of Lot, it had been abandoned so much they didn't even retain God in their knowledge. You go out here and you talk to people in the community, they have no concept of who God is. They know the terminology of God, but they don't know who He is. They have bought into the uh, uh, humanistic philosophy that God loves everybody and God's going to do good to everybody. They've got God as a big hippie up there singing Kumbaya. Hmm? Can I say God does love everybody, but He's angry with the wicked every day. Hmm? Can I say God accepts sinners when they accept His Son, but He rejects those that reject His Son. Uh, and God's not singing kumbaya. God's sitting there listening to the um, seraphim cry, Holy, holy, holy. Huh? Can I say something about this? They were apostate. There was no gospel witness other than Lot and Noah. Noah passed the test. Lot failed it, failed it bad. And can I say, there's not a whole lot of gospel light going out today. Mm. Can you imagine what America would be like if every church that claims to know the Lord actually knew the Lord and shined the light for the Lord Jesus Christ like we're commanded to? Can you imagine if Christians were really Christian? Mm. I wonder what Florence would be like if Emmanuel was really sold out to God. But I'm not going to preach on all that. I'm interested there in verse 29 where it says, But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven. I'm going to preach with God's help on this thought, the fire from God. The fire from God. Again, everybody's looking for rainbows and unicorns. God destroyed the world in Noah's days by water, but he promised never to do that again. Next time he's going to rain fire. I got to thinking about the fire from God. Can I say, first of all, I'd like to mention there's the fire of his woe. The Bible says in Ezekiel 24, 9, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city, I will even make the pile for fire great. Revelation 8, 13 says, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of their other voices of the trumpet of the three angels uh, which are yet to sound. Uh, God sent three woes in the book of Revelation. Uh, in Ezekiel, uh, he mentions uh, uh, a woe to the bloody city, the city uh, 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 that had uh, uh, sought dishonest gain, the city uh, that had abused widows and their orphans, uh, uh, the city that had not taken care of the poor, uh, that city that sought for great gain uh, 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 and left God out of it. Uh, God said he made the pile great for the fire. Uh, uh, the fire uh, of God's woe deals with punishment uh, and friend uh, it looks like in this world uh, a lot of people get away with things uh, but friend mark her down uh, uh, the Bible says vengeance is mine uh, thus saith the Lord uh, uh, Hillary looks like she got away with it she didn't uh, hey uh, 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 Nancy looks like she got away with it uh, she didn't uh, Hey, Chuck Shumi boy, uh, looks like he got away with it. Uh, he didn't. Epstein looked like he got away with it. He's suffering right now. Uh, hey, uh, it looks like a lot of people uh, get away with things that they throw us in prison and lock us up uh, and throw away the key. Uh, but friends, nobody's getting away with anything. Uh, God has uh, uh, the fire of his woe, uh, and he is going to punish uh, the wicked and sinners one of these days. Uh, mark it down, the fire fire of God's woe is his punishment but not only the fire of his woe the fire of his wrath that is reserved for judgment 
The Bible says in Ezekiel 22, 31, Therefore I poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. For their own way I have recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. Psalm 21, 9, Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Uh, friends, people have a misconception that God's going to let people get away with things because God loves them. Mm -mm. God has fire reserved. There's the fire of His woe that's punishment, then the fire of His wrath, which is judgment. And can I say, when you face the judgment of God, there is no return from that. Can I say, secondly, there is also a fire for our works. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3.13, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it is revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he had built thereupon, what, what built upon what? The foundation, the chief cornerstone, the Lord Jesus, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. Let me just clarify this. Believers, folks that have been born again, folks that have been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were judged for sin at Calvary. My past sins, my present sins, my future sins were all judged at Calvary. I have been forgiven. I've been washed uh, 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 from my sin. Uh, I've been robed in the righteousness of God. I've been justified by faith. Uh, my soul has been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, and my dear friends, I was judged for sin at Calvary. But my works, the deeds done in my body since I got saved, will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And they'll be judged by the fire of God. Amen. My dear friends, there's ways you can, your works will be manifest. If your works are wood, hay, and stubble, they were works to glorify the flesh. They were works to glorify you. They were works uh, that had nothing to do with the grace and goodness of God. They'll be consumed in the fire. But if your works were built on jewels and precious stones and gold and silver, they'll come forth through the fire, and that, my dear friends, will be our rewards that we'll lay at his feet because of all the great things he's done in our life. See, Brother Brian, we, we lose sight of what's really going to happen in eschatology. We get all excited about mansions over on the hilltop and streets of gold and seeing Mama again and all them Mama songs that gets everybody all tore up. But long before you ever see streets of gold, long before you ever see New Jerusalem and the gates of pearl, the walls of jasper, long before you ever uh, 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 get to see Mama and all those things, there's a thing coming called the judgment seat of Christ. And every man's going to give an account of himself. You're not going to give an account of me. You're going to give an account of yourself. Hmm? Let me just make it a little more personal. If you're a member of Emmanuel Baptist Church and you lay out a church, I'm not talking about being providentially hindered. I'm not talking about being sick. I'm not talking about uh, uh, having surgery. I'm talking about laying out a church. You're just as responsible for the message if you've been sitting here listening to it. Hmm? You're going to give an account of it. I have preached over, I don't know, thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of messages in the last 32 years. And I'm going to give an account of every one of them. Every one of them. Was it God's message or was it my message? I'm going to give an account. You're going to give an account of every opportunity the Holy Ghost dealt with your heart about doing something. Going to the altar and you didn't. Giving a tract to somebody and you didn't. Praying for somebody and you didn't. Holy Ghost told you to do this and you didn't. Holy Ghost told you to pick up a, call, a phone and invite somebody to church and you didn't. All of it's going to be burnt up. But those things, when the Holy Ghost told you to do something and you did it, gold, silver, precious stones. It's a serious thing. We, we love that mansion over the hilltop. Give me a harp and a robe and a crown. We like all that stuff. We don't like dealing with that judgment seat of Christ. But can I say, that's what's next. After the church is taken out of here, that's what happens. 
why this earth is under great tribulation for seven years and Israel's being purged because she rejected the Lamb of God and came unto his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God. My dear friends, uh, Israel will be purged during that great tribulation period. We'll be standing before Christ at the judgment seat of Christ. Then, we'll be given the wedding garment. Because we can't don the wedding garment until we've given an account to Him for the deeds done in our body. You ready for the judgment? Hmm? Ready or not? Here He comes. There's the fire of His woe, the fire of His wrath, and the fire for our works. Then there's the fire that Brother Russell referred to twice during his Sunday school lesson. I'm about to tell him to shut up. There's the fire that's going to destroy the world. Second Peter 3.10 says, but, that, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away, and with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Say, Brother Doug, why don't you get you an electric car? You need to save the earth. The earth's already condemned. Hmm. Matter of fact, if it's something green, I guarantee you I avoid it on purpose. Because hmm? I'm not a liberal and I'm not a sissy. Everybody that's green are little sissy liberals. John Wayne wasn't green and neither am I. Uh, say, oh, you ought to protect your environment. It's going to melt with a fervent heat, brother. Hmm? Huh? You say, what about the landfills? Fill them up. It's going to burn. Don't care. Hmm? Listen, I really, I don't, I, none, of that, none of that affects me. I don't care. I'm not saving the world. The world's going to burn up. Uh, not concerned about it. Well, don't you think we ought to be a little more energy efficient? Well, you can be if you want to. I just think burn up all the gas you can. Uh, matter of fact, if, it, if, if you're driving something without a V8, you ought to get right with God. Burn her up. Let her rip. You know what a V8 will do for you? It'll straighten out the roundabouts. You can just go right through them. <laughs> Drop her in L and leap. The fire of God is going to destroy this world. And the sobering thing about that, brother, brother Tommy, is we know a lot of people aren't ready to meet the Lord. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing how much energy, effort, and money is spent on things that are going to get burned up? Miss Annette and I was in Charlotte last week. I don't know where I've been. I've been to so many places in the last six weeks, I don't even know where I've been. I think we was in Charlotte, and we come out of this place. It might have been Greenville, I don't know. And there was this big thing. So what was it? I have no idea. And I said, and they call that art. And I said, and they spent a lot of money on that. And it was stupid. Huh? It wasn't art. It was a big chunk of rock. I was looking at it and thinking, what in the world? And they thought that was something. Where do you see Jesus in his glory? Now, that would be something. That would be something to take pictures of, and that would be something to brag about. That would be something to remember. But a big chunk of whatever we saw, I, I just thought, I said, what is that? Well, somebody spent a lot of money on that. By the way, can I just throw this out? This will help some of you all while your insurance rates are so How many have been to St. Elizabeth and Edgewood? Have you checked out in same-day surgery or, or, you know, where you go on the back side of that thing where you go in there and they, they sit you down and everything and, and then they take you up and run tests and all that? Well, if you look real close in that lobby, and by the way, every floor in the elevator, it's open. You can see it. There are these massive hand-blown glass art things. There's about eight of them. Each one was over $100,000. Why? So you wonder why uh, uh, um, MRI is $4,500. Let's pay for them stupid things. Huh? 
Why? So it looks, and every other year, you work it for them. Every other year, they're remodeling the hospitals. Why? Because they're overcharging me every time I go. That's why. Uh, all that's going to burn up. All the skyscrapers. Hallelujah. All the roundabouts. Uh, those came out of England. Nothing worth having comes from England. That's why we left there and came here. Uh, I'm trying to help you, though. There are so many people putting so much stock in a lot of things that's going to burn up. I thought about the burdensome fire. The fire reserved for the wicked. One of the saddest verses in the Bible is Revelation 20, 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Matthew 13, Jesus expounded on it a little bit. Verse 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Those who do not accept the Lord Jesus Christ, do not repent of their sins, those that die in their sins are going to die and go to the lake of fire. A place where the worm dieth not. A place that was created to inflict punishment on Satan and the angels that left heaven and followed him. A place designed to inflict punishment on supernatural beings. It was never designed for the soul of man, but when man chose to sin, man became a sinner, and man had to be redeemed. That's why Jesus Christ went to the cross, shed his blood to become our propitiation, our mercy seat, and become the only ways of escape out of our sin. Uh, when you and I get saved by the good grace of God, put our faith in Him, uh, He washes our sin and cleanses them. Uh, my dear friends, uh, you say, where are your sins? They're gone uh, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he uh, suffered and bled and died for you and I, was buried, uh, rose again upon the third day, uh, proving He had power over death, hell, and the grave. Uh, my dear friends, uh, He has power to save today, uh, and He can change your life. Uh, when you're lost in your sins, you're dead in trespasses and sins. Uh, you're dead to God. Uh, but if you get born again, uh, you are raised in newness of life, uh, and you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Uh, but those who reject Him, they can't go to heaven because those who get born again get to go to heaven and are restored to a right relationship with God like man had before the fall. Those who reject God, the only other place in eternity they can go is the lake of fire. It's got to break our hearts that we have neighbors and co-workers and relatives who are going to die and go to hell. It ought to break our hearts there are people in here today who think they're okay or folks who don't care. And they're going to die and go to the lake of fire. One day they'll care. But it'll be too late. It'll be too late. The lake of fire ought to break all of our hearts. And then I thought about this lastly. God has a fire for worship. In Luke 24, 32, you find two, Emma two Emmaus disciples. They're walking down the road to Emmaus. They just witnessed uh, uh, all the events of Jerusalem and heard the reports from the ladies when they went down to uh, embalm the Lord Jesus, uh, uh, his body, and, and wash him and, and, and perfume him and ready him for the proper burial he did not get. And they got down there and the angel said, Why well, seek you to live among the dead? He's not here for he risen as he said. They went back and they told his disciples and then there's a buzz throughout Jerusalem that Jesus had resurrected. And these disciples are considering these things. Uh, 
They weren't a, a part of the 11 disciples, but they were believers on the Lord. And, and, and their brother James are considering all these things, and Jesus shows up. And he begins to question them and said, well, don't, don't you know what's happened? With Jesus of Nazareth, how the chief priest had him crucified, and now they're saying he's risen from the dead. And the Bible says he began at Moses and preached unto them. Can you imagine Jesus preaching on Jesus? What a message that would be. Huh? And he began to preach things all concerning himself. Huh? Then they got to the house where those men were staying, and Jesus would have passed on by, and they bid him come in because it was getting late. Huh? And they put bread before him. Uh, and when he broke bread, he prayed over it. He blessed it. He broke it. Uh, hey, they were re it was revealed unto him who he was. Uh, maybe they saw the scars of the nail prints in his hands uh, when he broke the bread and handed it to them. Uh, but they re knew, realized who he was. Uh, and he vanished out of their sight. Uh, and they ran back uh, and told the disciples. But here's what they said. Uh, they said, did not our hearts burn within us uh, when he was preaching uh, Jesus to us? Uh, you know what worship will do for you? It'll cause a fire. Uh, there's a fire in worship. Uh, you see, some people come to church uh, out of service. Uh, I didn't have to come to church. Uh, I got to come to church. Uh, I come to pay respects uh, to the one who paid my sin debt. Uh, hey, there is a fire for worship. Uh, hey, believers ought to have a fire when they hear about Jesus. Uh, there's just something about his name. Uh, there's just something about who he is. Uh, he's altogether lovely. Uh, hey, he's Alpha Omega. Uh, he's the faithful one. Uh, he's the beginning and the end. Uh, he's the lover of my soul. Uh, hey, he's Savior, Redeemer. Uh, he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Uh, he's the King of Glory. Uh, hey, uh, we ought to get excited uh, here about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there ought to be a fire when we hear about him. Uh, there ought to be a fire uh, to herald him. Uh, and proclaim Him, and exalt Him, and to praise Him. Every song ought to be about Him. Every testimony ought to be about Him. Every sermon ought to refer to Him. We ought to herald Him. Can I say this? Believers should have a fire that hungers after Jesus. Did you come this morning hungering to hear about Him? We ought to have a fire to honor Him. I mean, he's been so good to us. Shouldn't we want to honor him? When I first got saved in 1974, yes, I said 1974, I am old. When I first got saved, I kept thinking about all that they'd done to him. And they beat him because of my sin. And I got to thinking about how many people in the world rejected him. And how many blasphemed him? And how many made fun of him? As a young Christian, ten and a half years of age, I just felt, Brother Josh, if I could do something every day that would bring a smile on his face, not because I wanted any credit, not because I wanted a reward, I just didn't want him to hurt anymore. Boy, I've thought about that many times. You know, that's not always in the forefront of my mind anymore. But shouldn't we do something to just please the Lord? For all the shame. Can you imagine how heartbroken he is every time a sinner rejects him? Can you imagine how heartbroken he is every time he wants to send revival to the church and the churches just aren't interested? Can you imagine how heartbroken he is every time he shows up to services and is outside knocking, wanting in, and people don't let him in? You think about that. Well, couldn't we just find something in our day to just please Him? To honor Him? Then I thought about this. Believers should have a fire to help others to get to Jesus. I preached a message years ago on when God kindles a fire out of lamentations. I wonder where's the fire? 
But we know the fire of his wrath is coming. But where's the fire amongst God's people? Well, I've been blessed to be in a couple of revival meetings here lately. Boy, I've seen, seen God do some great things. Boy, it's encouraged my heart. But I've also been in some churches. They just sat there and didn't care. It's in a church. Miss Nett, Miss Sydney was with me, and they just looked at me. What in the world is this? Hmm? A lot of times I come here and I look at some of y'all and I wonder, where's the fire? See, I don't know about that other place. But I know how much God shows up around here, and I know what God's done around here. Where's the fire? Maybe during the invitation you get in this altar and say, God, I sure do miss the fire. Maybe you need to get in here and say, God, just give me a little. See, our problem is we pray for him to pay off the RV. We don't pray for an RV. Or just give me a little. Well, I find little is much. God said it. Lord, can I get a little glimpse? Lord, can I get a little touch? Lord, can I get a little help? Jeremiah threw in the towel. He said, but there was a fire shoved up in his bones. He said, I couldn't stay. Just had a little. But it changed the rest of his ministry. Hmm. Huh? On the seashore, I'm trying to quit, but I can't. On the seashore, Peter couldn't forgive himself. Peter's all down in the dumps. Peter's ashamed to dress the Lord. And the Lord just keeps saying, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And finally, when Peter got over Peter, he said, Lord, you know all things. You know I love me. I love you. He said, feed my sheep. So he said, what happened? Peter got a little bit that day. A few days later, he preached and 3,000 souls were added to the church. Just a little. See, if we'd all get a little bit, and God bless it, because I, I see where God, when he gives a little, he, he gives it pressed down, shaking, bubbling over. If we all get a little bit, he's liable to change his whole community. We're liable to see a lot of folks headed to the lake of fire and now headed to the streets of glory. Are you listening? But see, we can't expect them to desire God till we desire him. I wonder, how's your fire? Some of you used to have a zeal. You'd show up early and stay late. Now you come late and you leave early. Some of you used to have a song. No, you got a complaint. Some of you used to have a touch. Now all you got a tug on your heart to get back to where you were. I wonder, are you willing to cry out for a little? You might be here today and you might not be saved and God revealed to you today you're headed to the fire. Friend, you don't have to go there. Jesus paid your sin debt. All you need to do is give your heart and life to Him. Just ask Him to save you. The Bible says, whosoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. A minute, we're going to have an invitation. You come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible, show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. You don't have to leave out here lost. You don't have to leave out here worried about what happens in eternity. It can all be settled today. I don't know what a day brings forth, but I know this thing. My name's written down in heaven. When this thing's over, I'm going to glory. And really, nothing else matters. Do you know that today? You can be saved today. Christian friend, where's the fire? Where's the fire? For all God's done to you and been good to you, there ought to be a fire blazing in your life. I wonder, are you willing to come and ask for a little? Go tell them what God will do. Let's all stand. Some have already come. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they're coming and picking out a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you.
Lord, my soul shudders to think about the fire of your woe and your wrath and that reserved for the wicked. God, I want to see everybody saved, and so do you. You tasted death for every man. God, I'm concerned about sinners. and Lord, there may be some here today. I believe in my heart there are. Some may come week after week after week. There's never been a change in their life. and They've never given their heart to Jesus. They're religious but lost. God, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. I pray they'd get right with God. And then, God, I pray for your people. How can we expect sinners to get right with God when God's people won't get right with God? God, help folks come and ask for a little fire. And then, God, set them ablaze. Do great things for them. Help us, Lord, during this invitation do business with God. Oh, God, you said draw nigh unto God. He'll draw nigh unto you. God, do a work. Touch people's hearts and lives. God, save sinners. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.